Hey everyone, what's up? This is Dr. Charlie Johnson, physical therapist. Appreciate you checking out this channel. Just got off a really cool coaching call. So I'm sitting here at my dining room table. That's what we do. We help people all around the world virtually um, with back, butt, and sciatic problems learn to heal themselves naturally using the power of their mind and movement as medicine. And in this call, again, just got off a coaching call. I actually walk a member of my Glute Relief Accelerator program, the uh, private coaching program that we've created to, again, help people um, resolve their pain naturally. Uh, and he had come through the program with back, butt, and sciatica pain in the past, but he started to now notice some neck pain. And well, one of my promises and or one of my goals is to make people self-sustainable, give people the tools, knowledge, and understanding and support so that now and in the future, they don't need someone else to fix them. But instead, again, they can use mind and movement as medicine and a pain relief process to resolve their own pain without being, again, dependent upon the medical system, all right? And so he reached out. He said, hey, Charlie, I think you can help me with this neck problem, right? And I said, absolutely, man. Now, you might be tempted if you have some type of back butt or sciatica pain to be like, dude, you're going to be talking about the neck? No point. Why am I going to listen to this? Principles, concepts. You can take the same exact principles and concepts that I'm teaching him. I tie them into and or take them from this back butt sciatica solution uh, that we've created and teach him how to apply it uh, to this neck issue. So if I were you, I'd take some notes, I'd rewatch it a few times um, and ask yourself, how can I apply what Charlie's teaching this person uh, to my unique situation? Whether it be a back problem, a butt problem, a sciatic problem, or maybe you have some other ache and pain, a shoulder problem, a neck problem, a knee problem, take the same concepts and apply them. All right. Principles first, tactics second. Let's dive into it. I, sorry, I can't show my camera is not working right now. That's all right, man. We'll figure it out. Um, yeah. So, yeah, totally, man. Well, hey, first things first, it's good to reconnect, man. Yes. It uh, has been a real challenge for the past um, 12 months, but I did succeed to apply all the principles from your program for my uh, lower back. Yeah. And yep. I was able to, like, um, go back to work quite fast. Good and, for you, man. Um, uh, I mean, I was struggling to to drive, and I was able to 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 to, to drive again um, long distances. Yeah. Um, I mean, sleeping was fine, and I mean, everything went quite well, and I was very happy. Uh, so yeah. Yep. Awesome, dude. Yep. And now it, it does work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Um, but now, now we've got this neck thing. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. I've been having this for the past two months. And okay. I, at the beginning, I thought maybe that was just like a muscle thing. Mm -hmm. And then um, it was starting to become quite acute at night when I was um, uh, lying down um, on the bed. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the main thing is the, the pain in the left scapula, the, the rhomboid area. Yep. Uh, yep. That's the most annoying part. It feels like... Um, uh, a nerve like a nerve pain or like a muscle pain it's not really um, and i do have a little bit of neck stiffness but i haven't been able to find like any type of motion to make it feel better and um yeah i mean i'm not sure what to do to be honest because <laughs> they yeah. told me i had um c6 c7 herniated disc a small one mm -hmm. and they said eventually it's gonna um, should should be back to normal at some point hopefully but okay. i'm, I'm okay. trying to apply the same principle to be able to get back to a normal life again totally dude yeah man i can help you no problem um okay so let me do this i'm gonna pull something up for you I, and i'm gonna cook you through this okay okay all right so principles first tactics second okay so principles are the concepts <laughs> All right. Everybody wants to jump to the tactics of like, well, what, what's the exercise and what's the stretch and what's this? That, that's, that's tactical. Let's talk about principles and concepts first. Okay. So I get that you got this stuff in the left shoulder blade. You've got some, some, um, some neck stiffness. stiffness. Right? Yeah. Yep. Uh, and, and pain at, at night is pretty yucky. Right. Cool. So yeah. now let's go to the concept. So if we look back at kind of the GRA process or the pain relief process, I teach people, right. It's like step one, We've got uh, to... And I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention that when I lean my head forward, um, I do have a um, uh, blade pain as well. That's more uh, prominent, same as when I'm lying down on the back. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yep, absolutely, man. And that makes sense. And we'll talk about that. So, uh, Tiff, uh, Tiffany, you can apply this same concept. Just know um, it, this is universal. You could have a shoulder pain. You could have a knee pain. You could have an ankle pain. Once you get the concept, you might need some like a manual is jumping on now. You might seem need some kind of refinement of like, okay. 
I, I get the principles, right, apply to the back, but like, how can I transfer this? Same principles apply, okay? So the first step that we do is we optimize the healing environment, and we do that kind of, if you will, mind and or brain and body, all right? And so on the brain side of things, right, we start to say, hey, man, you're going to want to freak out. You're going to have certain thoughts. You're going to have certain beliefs. You're, you might get an x-ray. You might get an MRI. You might Google something, and before you know it, the jelly's out of the donut, and, and guess what? You're freaked out. Okay. And so we know that that if pain is a danger signal, all of those things, right, that you've been told, led to believe, et cetera, right, are just going to act potentially as something that can sensitize the nervous system, set off the bells and whistles, and be a trigger for you. Okay. So calm, cool, collected, the best that you can, right? Rather than going down the diagnostic kind of rabbit hole, I would start with just being like, okay, where are we at? I understand I have these thoughts, these beliefs, these concerns, these worries. Right. Again, it takes no more effort, like I was talking with Sarna, to have to have some faith in understanding what you're dealing with, which is why you're here to get understanding versus having fear of like, oh my gosh, now I'm not gonna be able to do anything I want to do. Okay. <laughs> so that's that. Now, as far as as far as the body, right? We optimize by right trying to make sure we're not picking the scab by using different tweaks and positioning strategies and stuff like that to create an environment that's not constantly aggravating the problem physically. All right. And so the first step kind of we do inside program is first things first, I want to help people identify is this mostly, uh, a, a, we'll just say a body thing, a purely structural thing, or is it more of a, a brain thing? Now, to me, it sounds like it's more structural, all right? You have very specific motions that bother it. Um, it's very uh, recent, right? We're talking two months. Uh, it sounds very patternable. Uh, it sounds structural versus not non-structural. You see what I'm saying? Yes, that's right. Cool. Yep. So, so just so you know, my brain. So my brain's do do do. It's calculating. All right. Um. You know, you, you've got you've got body and you've got mind. And you've got this evidence list on the body side of things. My guess is that that's going to be the winner. Great. Now, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be aware of thoughts, feelings, beliefs, concerns, worries, anxiety, whatever. It just means that we're probably going to treat it more like a physical problem because that's what it seems like. Okay. okay. Now. When we talk about optimizing the environment, the first thing we need to do physically again is start to talk about tweaks and positioning. So the first thing I would say is, hey, man, if you've got pain at night, what have you done to try to do some detective work to negate your symptoms or to turn down your symptoms or turn up them? Either way, you can learn, right? And so what we're doing is we're saying, hey, man, so if you sleep on one pillow, two pillows, three pillows with your head up. I don't know. That's a really bad picture, dude. That's your head. All right. Um, what is that like versus if you sleep just on your back with a towel roll, you know, underneath your neck, you roll up a towel, put it in, in your a thin pillow or something like that. So it's underneath your neck. That's an option. That's, that's the pillow, the pillow trick. All right. Um, that's positioning. Also, right. If we think about as it relates to back button leg pain, I gave you three things that you could tweak if you were having trouble sleeping. It was number one, it was positions. All right. Number two, it was surface. And number three, it was nighttime routine. So is it so what are you doing before you go to bed? That could be setting you up for pain at night. Could it be the way you're sitting? Could it be what you're doing activity wise, the way you're reading a book, the way you're on your computer, the way you're on your tablet, the way you're looking at your phone, the way you're laying on your belly? I don't know what you do before you go to bed. But is there anything there that you could change? Uh most likely, yeah. Uh, when I lean my head forward, when I am on my computer, most likely, I think that might be aggravating things. Like and this, I right? Try, uh, I I try to sleep with a pillow that's bigger than, and a pillow that's smaller. And I did notice that smaller pillows help with the pain um, um, at night. Um, mm -hmm. But I haven't tried the towel thing under the neck. Okay, Maybe now. Something. Awesome, dude. So now this is where you need to start to connect the dots. All right. So you just told me the answers to everything. All right. Okay. I know you, you didn't catch it yet, but you just, they're, they're within you. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. So you just told me if we zoom in on this bad boy and you have this, this bad boy, the, the bad boy is you. Okay. This dude, okay. right. This, this stick figure. This is what you're kind of talking. When you poke your head forward and you're kind of in this position, right on your phone or whatever, right. We're going to say you kind of put a little kink in your neck. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, and so I know it's exaggerated, but you get the idea, all right? And so if this is a yucky motion, right, and it's not the best drawing here. I'll try to draw a little better. 
I think that I think the first one was better. All right, but you get it, okay? And you're you're here, and you're poking your head forward, and kind of a little kinked up at the neck, right? Then, right now, I can tell you, the more pillows you use, the worse you're gonna feel. Why? Okay. You tell me, so you get it. This is a yucky motion. Okay. Well, that makes sense. That makes yeah. Sense. You. So yeah. then we talk about morphing motions, and Tiffany, you're not there yet, but. The idea is like, yeah. okay, so you got a yucky motion. That's why I have you do a body scan right away. A question you should be yeah. asking yourself, Manuel, is like, where? How is this? How is this motion showing up in life? Well, well, dude, if you if you lay on your back and you put a bunch of pillows, that's how it's showing oh, up. Yeah. If you sit on your computer and that's how you do it, and that's showing up. If you're constantly looking down like this, it's showing up. If right, you, yeah. you're a bird watcher and you're constantly doing that, then then it's showing up. <laughs> yeah. Right. And so, so it would make sense that maybe poking your head forward and maybe kind of extending back might be a little bit pinchy and yucky, especially to that side. All right. Mm -hmm. And so you're going to want to ask yourself, okay, well, well, how can I change that? Well, I, I could be aware of that happening. Maybe you put a piece of tape, dude, on your neck where you, where you go like this, you put a little, I don't know, something that's not going to bother your skin. You, know, you put it right there. And this way you go forward, you're like, Oh, hold on. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> right now. That's just a little piece of feedback. Um, yeah. but that's the idea. Uh, and so that's one way to look at it, is that yucky motion is showing up in life, not only while you're, you're sitting throughout the day and you're multiplying yucky, but then also, um, at night, if you use multiple pillows, cause at, the more pillows you stack, the more you're poking your head up like this. Yeah. Right. And so it makes sense that you would be, you would do better with almost no pillow, uh, and maybe a towel or something like that rolled up and taped and put in your, a, a thin pillow, or maybe just nothing at all. Um, and it seems like that would be better. So I would be saying, hey, man, are you doing a lot of computer work or phone work or tablet work before you go to bed? Uh, computer, yes. Yeah. Okay. So I'd say, how could you change the activity you're doing before bed such that you're not setting yourself up for yucky night's sleep? Could you go for a walk for half an hour before you go to bed? Yeah, that could be possible. Yeah. Could, you lay on, could you lay on your elbows? So now you're like this, right? Like, you know, but flat on the ground. So this way you're not oh, sitting yeah. up doing this, but you could lay like this, this and, it, and it, and it, and it facilitates for, cause that is a really fancy word, but instead of being like, like, like this dude, right. It facilitates this as you're laying there. Yeah. Unless you let your head fall you forward. See. That's kind of weird. Right. Oh, yeah, and so, yeah. yeah so, so th that's two things. Nighttime routine, you can change the activity. So like the, the overall, like, Hey man, if I'm kind of static and sitting in one position, I will be walking or doing something, anything before you go to bed that kind of gets your blood flowing and takes you out of that position. Or maybe you're, you can't change working on the computer because you got a lot of work or you got to do something. Then you go from this position to the opposite kind of retracted position right before you go to bed. Let's try that. Uh, yes, there's yes, like yes. two, there's like two little tests for you to run there. Okay. Okay. That's that. How about during the day, for example, if I do a job, for example, where I have to lean my head forward, um, any uh, tips? Or... Yep. And I would say, look, you're probably not going to be able to prevent it completely, but I would say, hey, mm. how could you start to do less tilting your head forward? Meaning, if you do something on a computer and you're like, dude, I got to do it because like the font is this big, I'd say, hey, man, is mm. there another way that you could borrow a monitor that you could blow up the, the standard font, right? So this way it's much bigger. I get that oh, that's yes. not maybe possible, but that's how I would be thinking just from like a logistics standpoint um, to, to say, hey, this way, like, why are you having to do that? Probably because you're just sitting too far away from the stinking thing or the font's too small or maybe just the nature of your dot job is you have to be able to have all these spreadsheets. I don't know. Yes, yes. No, that makes sense. Yeah. So that's what I would be doing, right? The other mm -hmm. thing is I'd say, hey, man, do you have, do you wear bifocals when you work? I believe you wear glasses if I, if I remember the way you look. Yes. That's right. So are you wearing bifocals or single vision reading glasses? Um, single vision. Single vision. Okay, cool. Yeah, because you look in bifocals, what do you do? You got to look over the top of them. Yes. You're, then you're doing this, <laughs> right? And so be mindful yep. of that, right? Um, now, it sounds like you're, you're, you're using appropriate glasses, and that doesn't seem to be a problem, but that would be another thing that I would say. The other thing I would mm -hmm. also say, ma'am, is that um, as you're sitting throughout the day, if you yes. picture your your shoulders or your your arms hanging here as you're working, right? Yeah. Let me zoom in on this bad boy. Meaning, let me take that, take this little kink, and I'm gonna. It's not anatomically to scale or correct, 
but let's just say that this is this is your skull, the base of your skull, and these are your mm-hmm. neck bones, right? As you're kind of mm-hmm. kinked, right? Yeah. Well, if you start to take take some weight, take some weight. and hang it on this, which by the way, there is weight. It, it's called your arms, right? Arms. Yeah. Then it pulls it even more into a kink. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Right. And so if it pulls it more into a kink, then you're going to have nerves back here and joints back here and discs back here, which get even more compressed or irritated. Okay. So then what if you could chop your arms off? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All right. But for no. real, like what if you could deload the weight of your arms? So this way, right, you, you, you're, you're reducing this load. Your arms maybe like 8, 10 pounds, something like that. Well, yeah. you're, you're not causing further compression on that, on that uh, spring or that, that, that sponge disc in this case, yes, right? Um, yes, well, you, you could support it, man. So if you're sitting here and the edge of your desk is here, you're not doing yourself any favors. You're, yes. you're, all of your weight is right here. Yeah. And so I would, I would put my belly all the way into this bad boy. I'd be sitting here, right? And I'd be putting yeah. my elbows and getting it appropriately like supported. So this way, these things are, it's like somebody coming up behind you. My guess oh, yes. is, my guess is if you were to turn your neck to the left or to the right, probably to the left, because that's the side, right? Um, you would notice yes. some stiffness, all right? Yes. Um, and my guess is if I were to come up behind you, if I were to go like this behind you and lift up your arms, like, and so they're yes. just dangling for you, and then you were to turn yes. your neck, my guess is it would feel better. I see. <laughs> right now, it's hard for you to test. You could put them, you could do this on the edge of a, you could do this, yeah. you know, and, and try to be upright and then just try to turn, right? But it, it, that's in my experience after treating, yeah, mm-hmm. I treat people with back butt sciatic problems, but I also know a couple of things. And, and so mm-hmm. um, that would be something else you would do is deload the arms. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. And so truthfully, and then not only, dude, dude, Emmanuel, this is the coolest thing we ever done. Okay. All right. Not only does he tell you what to fix, what do you got to fix right now? Let me ask you that. What do you got to fix? Motion wise, what do you got to fix? Um, tilting my head forward. I mean, leaning my head forward. Dude, you got um, it. This is your yucky motion you got to fix. Yes. yes. Your yucky, at least one of them. Okay. Yeah. All right. So this is your yucky motion. Yeah. That's what you got to fix. And so day one, right now, you could do it and you'd be like, oh, 50 out of 100. Great. It tells you what to track. Week to week now, you can go ahead, yeah. man, and you can track this bad boy. Okay. Week one, week two, week three, week four. Great. Tells you what to, what to fix, what to track. It tells you what to change. Okay, dude. It's showing up in my life like this. And it's showing up like this. And so I got to ch- tweak that. I got to tweak that. I could tweak it like this. I could tweak it like that. You start to get creative in how yes. you could reduce the aggravation physically. And then also, we didn't talk about mentally, but physically in this case, at least. Um, okay. And then what to fix, what to track, what to change or what to tweak. Mm. So we got the tweak. We just talked about the tweaks, right? All, yes. all here. It tells you how to treat it. Okay. Now, treatment is this whole process, if you will. But if you were to find one motion based on um, what you know right now, what do you think it could be? I'm not sure, to be honest. That's why I, I, I've been thinking. and I, I've been a bit scared, to be honest, to try uh, too many movements because um, I've had that, um, that blade pain that was quite acute for the past two months. And I... I didn't really move my neck that much because I was stiff. So uh, at the moment, I'm not really sure, to be honest. Um, that's why I, I want okay, some guidance. It's all good, dude. So right now, I'm telling you that it seems like, and I could be wrong, mm. it seems like this thing is a yucky motion poking your head forward, is doing yes. this. So so what's the opposite of yucky? The... Um, straightening my head correct but even simpler than that righty tidy yucky yummy black white so if if this makes you yucky 
This might yeah. make might not work this way, but I would say the yeah. first option is opposite direction. If yucky, oh, yeah, is, that, the... is that yummy? Right, so you can put your, almost like you're putting your uh, chin on a table and you're sliding it off. Yeah, I'm trying. Yeah, it feels like yeah, yeah. I think. I think okay, so. cool. So that's one option. Here's your options yeah. for to fix it. All right, the options to to treat it or to fix it, if you will. Right. And what are we yeah. What are we fixing? We're fi We're fixing this. All right. Now yeah. what we're going to do is we're going to say the opposite direction. So what do I mean by the opposite direction? Well, instead of instead of this, instead of this, what's the opposite of that little stick figure, dude? Well, it'd be like this. It would be like, uh, right? You, you're straightening your neck out, right? So instead of going forward, you're going backwards. Does that make sense? Yeah. Cool. Okay, so that's one option. Though. I don't know if it's going to work, but we're making up our options right now, applying the same concepts we use to fix back butt sciatica stuff. Okay, yeah. this, this, that's the coolest thing about the program and the process. It's totally universal. You can fix anything with it. Okay, opposite mm -hmm. side. What, do we, what does he mean, opposite side? Well, I got trouble when I turn my head. This is the top of my head, and these are my eyeballs. When I turn my head to the left, it's uh, yuck. Yeah. All right, well, well, what if I turn my head to the right? It's kind of opposite direction, but also kind of to the opposite side. All right. Or, you know what? When I do this, oh, my left shoulder blade. Well, you got an opposite side, don't you? Oh, this side. Yeah. So then, then, so then we've got a right head turn. So, so we've got this this chin, chin uh, tuck thing, we yeah. uh, as one option. We've got this uh, right rotation of the head as another option. We've got a right arm raise, working the good arm as another option. They're all yummy options. And we got opposite yeah. direction, opposite side, opposite approach. What the heck does that mean, Charlie? It's a good question. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. So now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna say, all right, dude, you got the opposite approach. So right now, if you haven't really taken any approach, is that correct? You've, you've taken the avoidance approach? Yes, <laughs> most likely. All right, cool, cool. All right. So so I don't know if this really makes a whole lot of sense, but most people, right, would would have been trying to stretch this thing. They would have been trying to be like, ah, the shoulder yeah. blade, Arr! right? Yeah, but, that's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, but but what if you try to contract it? What if it's trying to lengthen something? Mm. You try to shorten it. Yeah. What you could do is you could say, all right, instead of trying to like stretch this thing out and pull on it and this and that, what if I just kind of like activate it and I contract it? What if I and again you could make it up a million ways. You could um you could say, hey, I'm just gonna I'm gonna stand there and I'm going to take my hand and I'm gonna try to push my head back, but I'm not gonna let it move. I'm just going to push, 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 push. I'm working my neck muscles. Push, 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 push. Hold, 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 hold. Or I'm going to do like, I don't know, three 20-second holds. Okay, that's yummy. Well, I can do that. Right? So you can do like instead of lengthening, you can do shortening. Right? And then there's a couple options that come out of that. Now, how do we prove which one of these options? Because we just lift several of them, right? We Now we got one, two, three, four. How do we prove which one of these options is going to work for you and it's going to work for you now immediately and there's no question? By trying, I mean, over the whole week and see uh, if it's actually doing something and then moving to the next motion, I guess. The, the scientific method, which is hunting for motions. Yeah. So now you've got you take all these these puppies over here, right? Yeah. And, and this one. Now you've got, we'll say, one, two, um, three, four, right? So so we got this one. We got the we got the right rotation. So this is the the going backwards with the head, right? We got the right rotation. We got the right arm raise. And we've got the the strengthen or the shorten approach. Yeah. Okay. Now. What's the process? Do you remember the process to figure out which one of those will work for you? I uh, yes, you to, don't need to wait a week at a time. Yeah, to, to pick one and to do it like a few times a day and see if it does uh, change the pattern of uh, pain or, um, yeah. I mean, All right, even uh, quicker than that. that. <laughs> even quicker than that. You test. What do you test? Yeah. You test your yucky, man. What was your yucky? Ah uh, yeah, yeah, he was like uh, tilt, leaning my head forward. Yeah, right here, um, man. Yeah. Boom! How yucky is it? 
let's just say 50. I'm making this up zero to hundred. Yeah. Okay. Then what do you do? That says treat. You plug in a variable. These are just inputs. Don't think about yeah. what they're, what they're, is this stretching this? Is this, is this loosening this? Don't worry about it, man. It's yeah. too fancy. Yeah. Okay. So now yeah. what you're going to do is you're going to say, huh? I don't know. I'm going to do this. I'm going to treat. Yeah. And I'm going to yeah. do, you're going to, you're going to take a bite of it. Number one, it's got to be yummy. If it's not yummy, it's off limits. But let's just say you do three, three times 10 reps. And you could do this literally right now. We don't have to do it now, but this is the yeah. idea. You do three times 10. Yeah. One, two, three. It's got to feel yummy. Four, 10, yeah. break, 10, break, 10. So you take a minute and a half or something like that and you do it. And then what do you do? How do you know it worked? With the um, uh, yucky motion, check if it's still uh, there. Yeah. Dude, totally. You got it, man. Now you retest. And maybe now it's a 30. In which case? It's a win. Yeah. Better, yeah. Mm -hmm. Or it's same, or it's worse, depending on what it is. A 30, a 60, a 50, whatever. Right? And then you follow some basic logic. If this motion is yummy, and it makes you feel better, you're done, dude. Now you ain't done mm -hmm. forever, maybe. But that is the starting point. For you, yeah. using movement as medicine, because then what you can do, you bottle this sucker up, slap a little label on it. This is the this is the pill bottle. I don't know if you can tell. Yeah. All right. And then on this label, because now what you did is let's just say that thing worked. Yeah. That is that is the that is the the name of the medicine. The chin yeah. chin turtle turtle retreat, my sister in law calls it. All right. And yeah. then you're you're gonna go and, and you're gonna slap a certain dose. And you do it a certain, so how much, how much, how often, and then timing. Well, when do you do it for the most therapeutic value or benefit? Yeah. Well, dude, I, I can't sleep. So guess what I'm doing? You're down you're here. Yeah, yeah you're, you're gobbling the heck out of it. <laughs> right? <laughs> so there you are, and you're taking this pill bottle. Yeah. Right? And you're just like, yum, 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 yum. All right. That's what you're doing. <laughs> but right before you go to bed. Now, it doesn't mean you can't do it throughout the day, but that's when you're yeah. doing it. All right. Mm -hmm. um, now, the dose could be anything. Again, it could be this is the art of it. This is where we'd have to figure it out a little bit more. But the dose might be 10 reps. The frequency yeah. might be three times a day. And when might you do it? Well, you might do it right, right before you go to bed. Yeah. Now, big picture, and then I'll let you roll, and, we'll, and we can rehash if we need to. But remember, man, this movement as medicine yeah. process fits into a very – uh, into a much larger process of optimizing. Then the second mm -hmm. thing is we teach you how to self-assess. Then the third thing, right, is that we teach you how to use movement and the mind is medicine. We'll call it MAM, all right? That's the pill yeah. bottle. And then the fourth step is like get back to normal. Yeah. And so we mostly, well, we kind of talked about a lot of them. We kind of talked about, uh, we definitely talked about this a little bit. We talked about this a little bit. We talked a little bit about this. We didn't talk about this. And, and there's many layers within each of these. But that's what you do, man. And you're well on your way. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I will try and see how it goes. <laughs> yep. Try. Now, here's the thing. You ain't going to try a lot of things. Yeah. Like, literally, you're supporting yourself at the desk. Remember, now, now boil it down to the most basic things. You ain't mm. sleeping with a bunch of pillows because, you know, it doesn't work. You're, so so you're, yeah. you're supporting arms at the desk. Yeah. You're doing this at night, okay? You're testing that at night. Yeah. You're probably getting active before you go to bed and walking. So there's maybe like yeah. three things. And honestly, if you, if that's all you did, man, you were like, dude, th this seems a little complicated. I don't know what you were doing there, Charlie, but I'm a little bit, you know, like confused and or that's too much at the moment. No worries, man. The first step is optimize. So I bet if yeah. you do these things only, you're already yeah. going to notice a difference if you – track progress okay cool okay well, that makes sense that's it dude problem solved <laughs> i will I, I will try definitely and try to modify how i um stand in front of my desk and uh, also in front of my computer and yeah before sleep yeah, that's a, a good point as well yeah 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 there's so many nuggets to be had man so i know that um, a while back, you came to the program with back butt siding stuff. You solved that using this process, right? Um, yeah. Cool thing is, it's universally applicable. You can solve this as well. And so um, a lot of people look at the process that we use to help people, this optimize the healing environment, 
this yes. self-assessment, this movement in mind is medicine, getting back to normal, and all this um, stuff, if you will, um, because it's the glute relief accelerator program. It's like, well, yeah. okay, well, it, it doesn't work for anything else. It's just for the glute. Well, people think that their problem is very specific, but as you're seeing, right, um, you're dealing with a pain experience, and you're dealing with either mind and or movement uh, type of stuff. And so we boil things down to the most basic first principles, concepts. We teach the yeah. concepts. We don't jump yeah. right to, if you go to PT down the street, right? You're just gonna be like, Hey, do these seven stretches. Yeah. Well, what about, what about all this stuff, man, about my work, about how I sleep, about how to discover what I need to track. How do I know if it's working? What about like the mechanics of knowing immediately what I should do? Cause I just did 10 exercises at once. Like there's none of this. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. So yeah, dude, I'm on your side, man. We got you, buddy. Yeah. It makes makes perfect sense. Uh, definitely, we'll try and see how it goes. Yeah. All right, so hopefully that was useful, and hopefully you see the way that my mind gets going. Super passionate about this stuff, because at the end of the day, most of y'all don't need those x-rays, those MRIs, and or some other person who's smarter than you to figure this out. Do you need some coaching? Do you need some guidance? Do you need a framework? Absolutely. You can learn this stuff if you're willing to, all right? Um, now, that being said, if you are interested in learning more about the process that we use, where you optimize, you self-assess, you use movement, mind is medicine, you get back to life and want to see how we kind of tease through all this stuff, but just in a little bit more depth, uh, then go ahead, check out the link, probably in the description and or the comments somewhere around this video, uh, to check out and register for a free Beat Butt Pain workshop. Again, that is my specialty, back button sciatic problems. But as you can probably tell, I've treated a few people with neck issues as well. All right, so go ahead, check out that workshop and let me know, was this helpful and how, this is the key, how can you take this concept, these concepts, if you will, these principles that I was teaching this individual and apply it to resolving your own back butt sciatica pain? Let me know in the comments. Thanks.